Welcome to Flat Ride of the Week, Episode 7. Today we'll be having a casual discussion about various inverting spinning pendulum rides. We will not be covering any rides like the Fabry Booster, as that will be its own separate video in the future. If you want to learn about non-inverting spinning pendulum rides, check out Flat Ride of the Week, Episode 6, linked in the description as we are covering both inverting and non-inverting spinning pendulum rides this week. As always, keep in mind that information on flat rides is a lot harder to come by than information on coasters. So if we forget anything or say something that's incorrect, please politely correct us in the comment section below. Let's get started. All right, so starting with the history, the first inverting spinning pendulum ride that we were able to find, this is not 100% confirmed, but the oldest we were able to find is the Fabry Jupiter. Um, they were first introduced as traveling models in Europe in South America in 1999. Is the oldest ones we were able to find. There may be older ones, not sure. Um, the ride model was later renamed to the Voyager and is still being produced today, although it's not really being sold. It was 17 meters or 56 feet tall. It had 24 seats facing inward. Um, you can think of a Hus Frisbee, it's basically that, but it inverts and it's got power at the top of the pendulum instead of a wheel at the bottom. Um, they're very, very popular in South America, not so much anywhere else in the world. All right, then moving to the competition. Somewhere between 2005 and 2010, Technical Park introduced their Street Fighter Revolution, which is basically a normal Street Fighter, but with a counter right at the top, so it can complete a full 360 degree loop. These rides can only be bought as a transportable model and they're still in production. The capacity is 16 people per ride. They, it has four gondolas that are floorless, unlike the Fabri Jupiter. And yeah, they're still traveling here in Europe. Uh, then in um, And it is important to mention that this video, unlike pretty much every other flat ride of the week, has been extremely difficult to research yeah, so mm -hmm. if we forget something or don't find something that's why yeah so then in 2008 KMG introduced the inversion 12 it's a 24 meter or 79 feet tall looping pendulum ride with three gondolas each fitting four people making a capacity of 12 people per ride this ride is able to unlock the gondola brakes when the ride is around 90 degrees which allows the gondolas to flip freely. This model is still being produced and is only available as a transportable version. As competition to the KMG Inversion Technical Park built the Loop Fighter, it debuted on the Spanish Fair Circuit in 2010. It's the same concept as the KMG Inversion, but it has different gondolas which face to the outside. It has four gondolas also fitting four people, which makes a capacity of 16 people per ride. This ride is still in production and it's available both permanent and transportable. Um, an example of this is the Time Warp at Fantasy Island in the US, the park that closed recently, sadly. And, and yeah, they're, they're oh, very sorry. popular on the European fairs. All right, and then as some further competition, the Zamperla Discovery Revolution, which is a very scalable model. It uh, comes in sizes ranging from 18 meters, or 59 feet, to 38 meters, or 98 feet. Um, it fits 16 to 30 riders per cycle, and yeah, it's a very popular ride in the U.S. Um, even more competition. There is the SBF. SBF made a lot of these, um, especially for a lot of family entertainment centers, the MIDI Dance Party which is 12 meters or 40 feet. It uh, fits 12 riders per cycle. Uh, it comes in both transportable and permanent models and again very popular at smaller parks and family entertainment centers. Then there is the Maxi Dance Party <laughs> which is 31 meters tall or 102 feet. Uh, for 24 seats, uh, only permanent uh, versions and it, the first model of this actually went to Silverwood in 2013. Very well liked ride at Silverwood. Then we have a pretty different ride, the Zero Star Shape. The prototype debuted on the German Fair Circuit in 2002. It was called High Energy, still traveling. Um, it's available as both traveling and permanent. It's 29 and a half meter tall or 97 feet. 
it's very different from the other previous mentioned models as the riders are seated in multiple gondolas similar to what can be found on a top scan. Gondolas are able to rate, rotate like a top scan. 30 riders per cycle and yeah, it's a very different uh, ride experience than the top scan. It's and it's also not really comparable to any other spinning, looping, pendulum ride. Hmm. It's it's a ride on its own. Very much Very so. Special. It's hard to fit in a lot of these rides. There's a lot that are yeah. close to fit in the definition, but not quite. And that's definitely yeah. one of them. Uh, moving on to some other facts. Yeah, in 2016, KMG introduced the Inversion 24, which, was, which has the same structure as the KMG XXL which was previously mentioned in the non-inverting video. Um, what makes it different from the XXL is that it has a counter white that is making it able to do a complete loop. The gondolas are also different. Um, and near the end of the ride, the operator can turn off the gondola brakes, allowing the gondolas to rock back and forth freely. This, is, this ride is the tallest pendulum ride in the world at a height of 62 meters or 213 feet. That's right, Six Flags. You don't have the tallest pendulum rides in the world. The traveling <laughs> KMG. <laughs> um, and then for one final fact, all the rides mentioned above uh, are capable of running a non-inverting cycle. Um, that basically will just act like one of the pendulum rides we mentioned in the previous video. Um, a lot of fares, well not a lot, some fares, will charge less for a non-inverting ride than for an inverting ride, which is actually pretty cool, because if you don't want to go upside down, you don't have to. And yeah, I think that's about all we have to say about these rides. You got anything to add? Um, no. Alright, well that'll conclude this rather short Flat Ride of the Week episode, and we'll see you guys next week.